Good morning. So this presentation is gonna be brief. I'm just gonna give you guys overview. I'm sorry, I didn't put a slide of the, I mean, uh, learning objective or anything like that. I just <laughs> made it very simple. So basically we're gonna go about uh, what is doors, what services your children can receive from us and uh, what programs doors has. So uh, first of all, what are doors? We, we hear doors, D-O-R-S, stand for the Division of Rehabilitation Services. We are uh, the state administration, uh, administrating the vocational rehabilitation program. Every state has its own vocational rehabilitation agency. It's called differently, like we call it here doors. So in some states they call it DVR. And uh, I believe some states call it DOR, D-O-R. So, and also in some states is under the Department of Labor. In Maryland, we are lucky to be under the Department of Education. Okay. So it's basically the services is uh, most in, in Maryland here, as I, I will speak, is 80% federally funded and 20% is state funded. Okay. Uh, that's doors. Under doors, we have, because this presentation is special, especially for uh, students who are blind and visually impaired, we have uh, uh, the Office of Blindness and Vision Services. As the name implies, it deals with individuals with disabilities, prime disabilities, vision impairment. And also we have the other uh, office is field, ser uh, I mean field services that deal with other disabilities other than blindness. Okay, that's just uh, an, an introduction to doors. Okay, uh, I believe the second slide say uh, entitlement versus eligibility. Is that correct? Yes, but for some reason it's not coming up. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, so entitlement versus eligibility. Your child, uh, I mean, your child with disability is entitled to free public accommodations that's an appropriate and meets your child's need, okay? But when they be uh, toward the uh, exiting high school, the, some of the students, some of the children will apply for adult services. Those are based on eligibility. So they have to be eligible for services such as those vocational rehabilitation services. So it's completely different. So we have, we struggle with that mindset, especially uh, parents like when they apply for doors, they believe the child is entitled for service. No, actually that's completely wrong. They have to be eligible for the service. And I will discuss the eligibility in, in, in the next slides. Okay, next. I'm moving a little bit fast, am I? Renee? I think you're fine. Okay. I, think, I mean, as long as you come back and talk about the eligibility um, stamp, like what, what it, okay. yeah. Okay, what sure. Exactly. Okay, vocational rehabilitation services. Actually, historically, we, we indoors, we used to provide services like age 16, second to last of high school and up to age 100 basically because but uh in 2014 we are at this at the federal uh, agency our agency uh, rsa rehabilitation service administrations amended the the vocational rehabilitation act and we start serving younger students age 14 in high school so this is a, a completely new population for us but it's it's, it's really good because when we start early, we can provide them that like some services they really need to develop some uh, employment self skills and so on. So the difference is they all under the vocational rehabilitation services, but we call those early services in pre-employment services. And we, we, those are, I will t t tell you exactly what are they, but let's go back to the vocation, the historical vocational rehabilitation services. These are wide range in, to include uh, job placement, orientation mobility, adjustment to blindness, assistive technology, uh, 
all this kind of service could be provided under, the, let's call it VR, vocational rehabilitation. So if I say VR, I stand for the vocational rehabilitation. Okay. The pre ed pre-employment services are limited services. The only, uh, you wanna say something? No, I'm just trying to find the pre ets <laughs> Okay. Oops, not cooperating. Oh. Go ahead, just keep talking. I'm okay. The uh, pre eds or the pre-employment service transition services are only five services, very limited. And those are, uh, I mean, uh, career exploration, work readiness, and work-based learning experience, that's to include internship, summer employment, and so on, uh, self-advocacy, instruction in self-advocacy, and uh, uh, post-secondary education counseling. So those are the pre-employment service we could provide to students in high school age, high school or college. You start from age 14 in high school all the way to age 21. And also the pre-employment service could be provided under the VR as well. We could include them in, in the VR plan. I will talk about it in the future, in, in later. So what are the differences? Vocational rehabilitation services, as I said, is based on eligibility. So we require medical documentation to st establish the eligibility for the individual. Also, uh, there is a financial participation could be, it's not for everybody, but we're looking to the family or the individual income and see if they meet the requirement for financial participation. So some may pay to our service, some may not. Also services are wide, as I mentioned, exclude a lot, I mean, job placement, job training, college, we assist the student going to college, orientation, mobili mo and orientation and mobility, uh, blindness skills training, and so on. Uh, so the process starts with uh, the individual will be referred or they can refer themselves to doors, and then they'll be assigned a counselor and then there will be an intake interview to gather the information and then they process the eligibility. And then under the eligibility, we are those serve under the order of selection. So it depends to the severity of the disability, the individual might be placed in, 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 in a waiting list. So we have indoors, we have uh, three categories of, of uh, eligibility or what to call order of selection. Category one is the most significant disabled, those will be served right away. And the second category is just significant disabled. Now we are, uh, uh, the waiting list is up to three years now. And the third category basically is being closed for a long time, it's just uh, disabled. Uh, what else? So after we uh, determine the eligibility and if they deem uh, eligible category one or the most significant disabled, we can uh, develop the uh, individualized plan for employment with the consumer. We call them consumers. And then after that, uh, services will start. And hopefully the ultimate goal is employment. And uh, we can provide employment services, uh, employment uh, retention services, and so on. And as I said, also, I mean, college assistant as well. Okay, uh, the pre-employment services is basically, it's just the student has to meet, uh, it has to be, in, first of all, uh, the, the consumer has to be a student in high school or college. They can start in, uh, when they get into high school, age 14, as I said, and up to age 21. Uh, we don't call it eligibility, but there is, uh, they had to be qualified, the qualification, it could be just uh, their uh, IEP or just a documentation from doctor saying this, they are a student with a disability. So it's not as extensive as in the VR, okay? Oh, I, I just forget something. In the VR also, in addition to the eligibility, it has to be 
I mean, uh, impediment to employment and limitations as well in order to receive them. Here, we don't look into those in the pre-employment services. And of course, in the pre-employment service, there is no financial participation. Uh, the process is very, uh, the, 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 I mean, forward. It's very simple. So as I said, uh, the just we need documentation that, uh, that saying they are either enrolled in high school, they're student in high school or on enrolled in college. Of course, they have to meet the uh, age and they have to have uh, some uh, documentation about uh, disability, like from school, from psychiatry, from, uh, uh, I mean, the doctor or something. Very simple. I have a question for you. Sure. So what if a student has a disability that is in, that they need accommodations and, and it's impacting their learning? Yeah, yes. And they're, uh, that's, over, they're over absolutely. 21, but they're oh, in college. In 21, no, 21 that they had to go to uh, to the VR and then, you know, as I mentioned, they have to establish the eligibility by, uh, I mean, we're going to require extensive medical saying that uh, what's the disability diagnosis, how it does impact their independent living or employment. Okay, but what, yep. you know, what happens if they're, like they are in the pre ets but then they turn 21 and they're still in college? So. Uh, in in where, where, when they are under 21, I mean, they can apply for the VR even under 21. That's when I say okay. the pre-employment is only those for, for only those five services. I'm going to speak a little bit. Maybe I can talk about it in, now. Okay. Uh, the student, as I said, they can apply for the VR now early. Okay. But the problem, if they found not significant disabled and placed in, 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 in a waiting list, they, we cannot go back and start the pre-employment services. That's unfortunately, the, that's how we, the RSA give us a guidance. We cannot go back. So we'll, the, the good thing, we can start the pre-employment services just by providing very simple service, a career exploration, and then we, then we can decide whether they meet the criteria for uh, significant disabled. So these things, the counselor will let the family and the, uh, the parent how to proceed. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, what else? Uh, did you want me to go to the slide? What can you do for your student for, I guess, uh, computers? No, what, did I say what the difference? Yep, we finished with the differences between the pre-employment services and the VR services. Among the similarities. So the, those both services, the VR and the pre-employment service is to assist the individual to gain employment skills and ultimately to go to work. So they build on each other. It's not like separate services. Right. So what can you do for your student? Okay, hold on one second. Let me find some. Oh, did I say about the pros for pre-employment services? Just uh, let me say this quickly. I believe I started and I, then we moved forward. So after we gather, I mean, uh, first the student had to, uh, the parent had to complete the student information sheet and then uh, provide documentation about their uh, disability. And then they will sign a student agreement. Uh, the student agreement is kind of the, what kind of services that the student might require from those five services I mentioned earlier. Okay? What can you do for your student? Is to provide them information about doors, the VR and the pre-employment services. Also to give them the student uh, information sheet uh, and then uh, let them, of course, uh, I mean, contact the, the local doors office. Okay. Hold on one second, I missed something. I do. 
Okay. I believe there is a link there on the uh, slide up for uh, our website, the refer information sheet. Okay. And I also wanted to say at the, at the end of the um, what can you do for your student page, mm. it says invite your doors counselor to the IEP meeting. Okay, yeah, that's very important. Uh, yep, I, I, that's, I was trying to look, get into that. Yes. Sure. Right. Yep. Definitely. Highly I mean, recommend that. <laughs> highly, absolutely. And I believe the parent had to sign or, or give permission yes. for this for the school to invite their counselor. Absolutely. Yes. I highly recommend. Yep. Very easy to do. Yes. It just keeps them. It, it just they. It gives them firsthand knowledge of what's happening. Exactly. And, um, I think exactly. it's great to have everybody. And, 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 and that's going to help with a smooth transitioning, seamless yeah. transition from, from uh, I mean, entitlement um, to eligibility or, or uh, services from high school to post-secondary. Yes. Absolutely. So when they've been, uh, they refer to DOORS, the uh, DOORS staff will... Uh, Contact the student and, and, and uh, contact the student, and the parents, and complete the paperwork and discuss the services, the very, those type of services, either the uh, pre-employment or the VR, and then they would determine which which way to go, whether the student is only going to go to the pre-employment or to the VR. So that's going to be the discussion when the parents and the counselor meet. And then they will initiate the services. So, uh, did I miss anything else? Um, I think you've covered so the next slide is door staff. Yeah, those, those are basically the, the services, pre employment services that are, 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 are approved for our student, the blind and visually impaired student. So and the next slide talks about um, services for OBVS. Right. And it talks about missile and um, some other. Yes. So we, we, we have uh, those services are available for uh, our student all over the state. Uh, Middle schools for the blind are approved for two services missile summer program that is a, is, is a summer program and uh, the student get paid which is good <laughs> and yes. yes and they get some le work based learning experience in addition to some uh, work readiness uh, skills and also now we have this program just newly and just approved now uh, we're looking for st uh, student the college mentoring program so it does help the student who are have who's in college to navigate some of the difficulties in college, self advocacy, advocating for for themselves to get the accommodation they need in the classroom, and so on. Those services are being provided by Middle School for the Blind. Next, we have services are provided here at the Workforce and Technology Center. We have ACE, all about college exploration, as the name implies. As uh, it's for college pound student starting in, in, in uh, their juniors. So they can apply and then uh, it to involve some college tours and some other activities. And the second program being uh, provided here as a workforce technology, force work and technology center is a summer program as well. It's called, uh, I can't remember, it's in, uh, independence and your future. Advocacy, independence, and your future. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no yep. Work together. Uh, basically, that's for uh, to gain some uh, work readiness skills. Uh, also, Columbia Lighthouse, for, uh, House, Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind, they have two programs. Uh, uh, the, they have the summer program, similar to MISIL, and the student goes to, I believe they stay in the, at the American University. Yes. Okay. And also they have the other uh, workshops to, for, I mean, to gain some work readiness skills and independent living skills. 
And the last program we have uh, is uh, National Federation for the Blind. They have uh, career mentoring. So the student will be assigned for a, a, a mentor to discuss various aspects of blindness and employment. We used to have, uh, I mean, blind, blind industries and service for Milan, but uh, they didn't have any transition service or pre-employment services this year. So I don't have it in the slide. Hopefully okay. they will uh, have something soon. Okay, that's, I believe that's all this. I, I really quickly. appreciate it. But I mean, oh, yeah, if, if you want some, uh, just by Q&A, &A, we can, probably we can, uh, talk a little bit if you have any question. Well, I think my main question was, and, and this is something that I'm seeing a lot of, um, mm -hmm. some students just take a little bit longer to get through college. Right, right. So their age, they're gonna be turning 21 while still going to college. And I think that that's kind of what we're encountering a lot. We see a lot of these kids mm -hmm. um, like kind of aging out they're in the pre -ETS program and then they turn 21 and they're still in college. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that the main thing that just from coming, cause I'm a parent of a mm -hmm. transitioned child as well, that she's not right. a child anymore. She'll be 22 soon. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the main thing you can do is, you know, you and your child, quote unquote, mm -hmm. stay in touch with your doors counselor. Absolutely. That's, awesome. I cannot stress that more further. And they That's will the guide important. you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially when they're close to exiting high school, is if 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 you haven't yeah. started the process, you've better start it now. Yes. Because doors is a huge resource, and extremely beneficial for you and uh, as a parent for your student for your child. You need to tap because in. Because I, I I absolutely, whether your your child is going to college or looking for employment, definitely can help in both both areas. Definitely. And I mean, we're doing, my daughter is actually doing both right now. Uh -huh. um, and they've really, um, they're real. I mean, they're on top of it more than we are. <laughs> uh -huh. Absolutely. Um, yeah. They're, they're kind of, you know, when is this going to happen? When it, Cause she's starting another program and um, they're, they, she, uh, her counselor just keeps sending us information about it and, and forms to fill out and make sure that we are, you know, following all the, the guidelines and, and getting all, everything in that needs to get in. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You need that support. So Absolutely. definitely helps. You know, my daughter um, also, one thing that Doors um, helped with was when she first started college, mm -hmm. um, was O&M instruction at uh, the college. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and also technology. Yes. Because when your, your child exits high school, that technology go back to school. Yes. And, and when you go to college, they need the technology. So those can assist in, in, in assessing your child, identifying the technology they may need in, in, in college, and hopefully they can help you in purchasing those te technologies. Yes, and they actually um, helped with all of that stuff and came out to the, our house. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and brought the technology to my daughter, so. Correct. Um, and yeah. also we can train if, 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 if the yeah. your child doesn't know how to use them, you can train them. Whether he at the Workforce Technology Center or as you mentioned, we can, if they live far away, they cannot get to the center, we can either use a community provider or the staff from, do, from WTC, Workforce Technology Center, can, uh, can go in and yeah. teach your child. And they'll also come to the house and right. organization and uh, daily living skills. Right, right. And also if the child goes to, to live in the campus, also we can address the O&M and, and the independent living at campus, in, in the campus as well. Yes. Yeah. Great thing. So That's definitely, happening. definitely. And, and not only that, also in addition to providing the service, we also can give information, scholarship information, so on, to, to, awesome. to, to the parents as well. So definitely uh, make sure doors is, 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 is in your tool book, toolbox. So I would just suggest that um, if anybody has any questions to Google doors, <laughs> yeah. um, contact their local doors office and they will guide you on the next step to take. If, you exactly. Know, if not... 
exactly. And, and, and the website, I'm sorry I didn't put it, but it's, I believe it's there somewhere. You can mm -hmm. just go to uh, www.maryland, spelled out, dot go, no, sorry, www.dors.maryland.gov. So Maryland is spelled out. It's yes. so easy. Yep. Very simple. Yes. Well, thank okay. you so much, Mutasa. You're welcome. Really? I hope this is helpful. And if you guys have any question, please reach out. As is, I mean, you can Google us and you can email us, call us, whatever. We'll be glad to assist you in any way we can. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Renee. All right. Have a nice day. Bye. You do the same. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.